Now this is a basic two node installation and I'm going to be installing this two node cluster on two Dell R620 servers. Each server includes um, the Verge IO 4.92 ISO um, on a USB to basically uh, do the installation off of. Um, two Intel Xeon processors, 128 gigabytes of memory, two 10G base T ports, two one gigabit ports, that'll be on our external network access for our UI, um, one uh, two terabyte PCI NVMe, that's for our vSAN metadata. The minimum requirement for that is actually 240 gigabytes. I just have these two that I'm gonna use. And then four Samsung 850 one terabyte Pro SSDs, and those will be for my vSAN tier three, which will be for VM workloads. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, as I jump into my first server, you can see both my servers are ready to go for the installation. I'll go to my first server here, and we'll click on the standard Verge 4.9.2 install. Now, when I click on that, it basically boots the OS up off the USB stick. Um, and then it takes about, uh, about 30 seconds to load into memory. And... Um, and basically what we do is we load this into memory and then we install everything um, out of memory off the ISO. Now here we go back to our first server. Here you can see I'm going to go ahead and, and set up my first controller. This is going to be a two node system so I'll have two node controllers for high availability and redundancy. And we'll just go ahead and click OK. And is this a new install? Yes. I'm going to go down here to my US time zone. Typically it picks up everything automatically either from your last installation, whatever you had running on here, or from your uh, BIOS IPMI settings. I'll click mountains, since I'm in the mountain time zone. Here you can see it's got my date. Has my correct time, verifying that with my laptop time. Click OK. Now here's the name of the actual cluster. So when I log into my UI, this is the name I'll see in my, and we call this our cloud. So I'm gonna call it my, let's call it my, Read cloud. And click OK. I'll use the default admin and the standard password that I use. We'll do it again. Here is my break glass email address. We'll use my work address. Now I have the option to, if I click on this, I can pick my um, all of my ports in my network, or I can pick. Um, just the ones that I'm going to use. I'm going to go ahead and click on there. Here you can see I have these different ports that I can use. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and click OK. My first port is going to be my 10 gigabit port. My 10 gigabit port will be my four, first core switch. So I'm going to click OK on that guy. My core switch basically supports my vSAN replication, all my data I.O. and my core services that are built into the cluster. I'll click enter on that or return. Come down here, you can see my default MTU is 9192. If I had this connected to a switch, I'd want my MTUs on my switch ports to be 9216 to be able to support my 9192 MTU for my core. It is my core network, so I'm gonna click yes on that. I'll just go over to finish with my left arrow and click finish. I'm gonna use the default IP schema for my core network. I'll set up my second core switch, again, using a 10 gigabit um, 10 G base T port and I can see that this is active because it has a little star next to it over here. So we'll go ahead and click OK. I'm going to edit that and call this my core 2 switch. I'll hit return. Here I'll, I'll leave everything as the default. It's still a core network. So I'll click yes. Finish on that one. Click OK on my default. Now here I'm going to come down to my active port. I'm going to remove that port and I'm going to click OK and it will configure the port with a little asterisk next to it, not the one that I put with my space bar, but right here. And this, we'll edit this, we'll call this my external-ui switch. I'll click that, and I'll come down here, and this time, we're gonna switch this to no. And click enter. And then also for my MTU, I'm just using unmanaged dumb switches um, for my one gig ports for my UI access. I could change this down to a lower MTU. I'm just gonna leave it as is. It should pick up okay with that. And then I'll just go ahead here and click finish. And then we'll just click okay. 
And I'm just gonna click finish on that guy. Nope, I'm gonna go up. And we'll just click no on that. And we'll just call this extra. We're not actually gonna use the extra switch. And then we'll go enter, come over here, finish. VLAN ID for your core switch. So we'll just take the blank here, or the default, because we don't have to put a VLAN ID, especially since it's cross-connected. Please enter the core network IP, so that'll be um, for the core. Same thing for the, the DMZ. We can take our defaults here. These will be applied. Please select the switch that will provide external network. That's my guy here. So I'm gonna put a space bar, and I'll hit return. Which VLAN ID do you want to use for your external network? I don't have a VLAN ID on my external network. I don't want to use DHCP. I do have an IP address, so we'll do 192.168.2.44, and I'm on a slash 23 subnet or CIDR, if you will. I'm gonna click OK, and it picked up my gateway correctly based on my CIDR. I'll click OK, and then please enter your DNS servers. For my first DNS is an internal DNS, and then my second DNS, and you see it's space delimited, it's not a comma, I just go 8.8.8.8. That'll be good old Google. Click OK. Please select the switches that will provide the maintenance network. We don't have to do this today, so I'm just gonna click OK on this. It's not a, a, a hard requirement to set up your, your cluster services. So um, do you wanna make any changes to your IPMI settings? No, we're okay there. We'll pick that up automatically anyways. Click done. Please enter the username login for our update server. So this is typically applied during the licensing process. You'd be uh, provided a, a user ID to log into our, our licensing servers. I don't have that right now, so I'm just gonna click okay. It'll let me go through that. I can set this up later in my settings once I get into the UI. Now here's where I wanna set up my vSAN partitions. This is based on, on my MVME drive and my four SSDs. And it's asking me, do I wanna apply the AES 256-bit encryption? Our, our encryption is software defined, so I don't require um, disks that um, support you know, encrypted disk. I can do it with any disk in the environment, but I'm gonna click no for now, because I don't have a secure environment that I have a requirement for that. Now here you can see it picks up all my drives automatically. It has my cruiser drive that I'm um, installing my ISO from, or doing my installation off my ISO. I have my four Samsung SSDs, and then I have my one NVMe um, drive. And you can see that the device on that actually says NVMe 0N1. Um, so I'm gonna click, I'm gonna do my space bar on my USB drive, because I don't need to set up a, a vSAN tier for that, obviously. I'm booting off of that. I'll click OK. Now, would you like to manually set the tiers on any drives? Yes. And the reason we're gonna do this is I'm gonna set my NVMe to tier zero, so it's dedicated just to my metadata. And then I'm gonna set my, and then I'll leave my, uh, my four Samsung SSDs um, to my tier three. So I'm gonna click on this guy, select return. And you can see here, a tier zero, just like I said, meta only. Um, you want fast read, fast write, high endurance here. So I'm gonna click okay on that. And now you can see it's changed it to tier zero. The rest of these I can leave as my default tier three. I'll click done. Um, do I need to swap? Not when I'm running all flash and NVMe in my environment. I don't think that's ever gonna be necessary. I'll go ahead and click okay. You may wanna do it with hard drives. I don't even see the need for it anymore um, with hard drives, especially with the way that we, um, we write the IO, um, the IO down to the disk very fast. You don't really need to swap, but we'll click okay. And here you can see as we're setting up the vSANS, very simple process. It goes in and it formats the first um, tier um, that we picked, which was tier zero. And then once tier zero is done formatting, it'll go and pick tier three, and then it'll format the four SSDs in tier three. Now, if I wanted to, if I wanted to use the um, MVMEs that I set up for tier zero, just specifically for my metadata, and I wanted to run VM workloads or services on those, I could have selected it as a tier one and still used it for MVME data or metadata, but also at the same time, I could have used it for my VM workloads. But when I put it in my, my tier zero, I'm basically taking that NVMe drive and I'm dedicating it just to my metadata so that it doesn't get, there's no IO contention with VM workloads on the same drives. And also it's all dedicated to the metadata. Now here you can see we're going through the, the different um, SSD devices. It looks like this guy's almost done formatting. So I'm gonna go ahead and close, um, reboot here.
And while this is rebooting, I'll go ahead and, and go pull out my USB stick out of the server. Now with a little editing magic, you can see here, um, I am now at the boot up screen of my first node and I have my Verge IO OS 4.9.2 ready to load. So I'm gonna go ahead and click enter here. And it brings up all our services and then there's a user interface. Now if I click on the user interface, go ahead and click return. It actually brings up an internal browser that we have. And you can see here, I have my advanced screen on my internal browser. I click on that. I'll proceed to my UI, and now I can see my UI. But before we log in, I just wanted to confirm that my services were up and running. Now we'll go to my second console over here. Here you can see I've already booted my USB ISO up into memory, so now it's ready to do the second install or the second node. So I'm gonna go ahead and click controller, primary redundant vSAN controller, just like we did on the first node. Click OK. Now this time, instead of clicking yes as a new install, I'm gonna click no. And this, what this will do is it'll force it to join the first node um, controller in the node, in the, uh, in the cluster. And you can see it's asking for my admin password to be able to join that node. And I'll go ahead and give it my admin login and password. Would you like to attempt to automatically detect the network configuration? Yes. This will attempt to auto configure the network, but it will not work if your core network resides on bonded NICs. So we're not on bonded NICs, so this shouldn't be an issue. Now here you can see it's detecting the NICs and it's seeing a max MTU size of 9710, so there shouldn't be any issues there. It found my usable NIC, um, and that usable NIC is the first uh, 10 gig port on my first node that I have installed, so I'll go ahead and click OK, and that shows that my cross connect's working correctly. Now this process here, this is where it restarts the fabric, and it also wants to synchronize with the NTP server on the first controller. And this time, this process can take a little time. Um, yes, we'll go ahead and my temporary, I'll just take DHCP. It'll grab an IP address off the core network that it already sees. There you can see it's establishing a link. It's got an IP address. We do a, a, a ping statistics. You can see one receives zero packets loss. Okay, so now that we're back, we're um, done synchronizing with our NTP services. I'm gonna go ahead and click I'm done. Now it asks us about our vSAN again, setting up our vSAN because this is a new um, server and it wants to be able to synchronize the disk on this new server with the current vSAN on the, uh, the primary cluster or the first cluster. So um, would you like to encrypt the vSAN? No. And then basically I have to set up my disk on the second server just like I set up the disk on the first server. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK on here. Let's see, it doesn't have my cruiser drive. And if I click OK, it should allow me to, would you like to manually set the tiers? Yes. And then this one, I'm going to set to zero like I did last time. And then we'll click done. And here again, just like on the first um, node that we installed, you can see it's basically formatting the drives in the system. And this can take a minute or two to go through the format process, just like on the first drive or on the first server. So vSAN's done mounting. Um, now we're going to join the cloud with the uh, node one in the cluster. And these are all the standard processes that goes through as it's adding a new node into a cluster. So we'll go ahead and reboot it. And while that's rebooting, I'll go ahead and pull out my second USB. So here we are now back at our boot. Um, you can see here, instead of having the installer, it says Verge IO OS 4.9.2. I'm going to go ahead and, and if I let it, it would uh, boot into that OS automatically that's installed on the NVMe drives in, in the vSAN. I'll just go ahead and click OK. Here you can see we've made all of our network connections. 
it's listening, listening on, on all the um, correct subnets. The NTP is set, it's starting my vSAN. My vSAN is successfully mounted. After one minute, you can see all of my services come up and then I come into my user interface. This is on my node two. You can see 2.32 here. My first node is 2.31. This is through my Dell iDRAC IPMI console. I'll go back to my 2.32. I'll select user interface and this will then also bring up the browser. And we're done with our installation. Now, the second piece of the installation is I can go into my original IP address through my browser and I'll go ahead and click. I already have the Verge IO in my home lab in my DNS. I call that HLAB. I'm going to go ahead and click right there. Here you can see it logs right in. There's my read cloud. That was the original name that we gave it. I have my two nodes. These are the systems that we just installed. If I click on node one, here you can see there's my two um, Xeon processors, my memory. You can see my drives. I have my NVMe drive, um, 1.9 terabytes available. And then I have all my um, Samsung SSD drives for that node. And then if I come into my read cloud again, and I look at my vSAN tiers, I have my tier zero for, dedicated for my metadata. And then I have my tier three dedicated for my VM workloads. I can come in here, I can see my drives. If I go back into my read cloud, I can see my networks. I can click on all networks, my DMZ, my core network. And then I have my external network here and that runs off my external UI switch. And then you can see my core and DMZ run on my core one and core two switch. Those are the switches that we set up. And then I have my extra switch, the one that we weren't using. And that's it. We've just installed a two-node uh, Verge I.O. cluster. Thanks for watching the video. Bye.